What is up, everybody? Today we're going to be talking about Darren Williams, Morley, his downfall. Where, where has he been at? I haven't seen Darren since his last season with Cleveland, and even then I didn't see him in those in that season either because he was uh pretty much invisible. We're going to talk about his downfall in his NBA career because at one point in his career you may not have noticed, but he was scoring 21 points in one season or two seasons. So let's get straight to it. In 2005, he was picked up third overall by the Utah Jazz. Um, he, he stayed there for six seasons before getting traded to the New Jersey Nets. In those six seasons with the Jazz, he averaged 17.3 points per game, 9.1 assists per game, and 33.2 rebounds per game. Uh, he shot 46% from a field goal and 35% from the three-point line. Uh, those are good stats, putting up for six seasons with one team. And uh, after he got traded to New Jersey Nets, is he only had one season where he averaged 21 points. And then after that, his points started taking a dip and everything else started taking a dip as well, where his age just started getting higher. Um, and with the five seasons with the New Jersey Nets slash Brooklyn Nets, he averaged 16.6 .6 per game points per game and uh 7.5 assists per game uh he was shooting uh 40 percent and he was shooting 35 percent from three uh pretty much the three point uh percentage didn't really change from the six seasons with jazz and the five seasons with the brooklyn nets uh, i kind of stayed around the same percentages you know nothing really changed there until he got changed, until he went to Dallas and um, he put up 13.7 points per game and 6.2 assists per game, but everything took took a dip. Uh, I don't know if it was because of old age or maybe it was just because he wasn't used to playing with Dirk. But you'd think as a playmaker, he would have more than 6.2 assists per game, especially being older. You would pass the ball more. Occasionally, you pass the ball more. Um. So after his second season with, well, during his second season with Dallas, he was waived and Cleveland picked him up as a uh, playmaker off the bench because they needed more playmaking from the bench after Ma Matthew Della Dadova left to go to the Bucks and um, Kyrie, just in case anything happened to Kyrie as well. So having Darren Williams call him off the bench for the Cavs seemed like, like, a match made in heaven you know he was scoring 13.7 points per game with dallas mavericks especially before he got waived and everybody thought especially us cleveland fans we thought he was going to be averaging just around as many points and assists because he was also averaging 6.9 assists before he had left um unfortunately that is not what we got in 24 games he like i said in 24 games he only played he only started in four of them, and he only averaged 7.5 points per game, 3.6 uh, assists per game, and uh, he was just shooting terribly, he was passing terribly, he was doing everything terribly, and um, at the end of the day, we should have picked up somebody else during free agency, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to have. Um, if you think... Darren Williams is going to be back in the league, either, either obviously as a backup point guard. Where do you guys think he would fit best, especially being older and uh, used to be a playmaker, like pass first playmaker? Where do you guys think he would fit best? Would you think he would fit best if he just went back to Utah, you know, just ended his career in Utah? Or do you think he would be good in Brooklyn to give him a little bit more of a, a, a quote unquote playmaker off the bench? Uh, maybe it was just a Cleveland system. There's a lot of questions that that we need to put into perspective, especially with Darren Williams' playing career. Because uh, when he was at uh, Utah, his points were good, and then like Brooklyn, his points just started going down. Um, 